Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how I built these awesome 90s Necromunda inspired buildings and walkways. These started the same way the majority of all my builds do. Sketches, then Adobe Illustrator. I created a whole bunch of templates and printed them out. These are then glue sticked onto graphics medium chipboard, serial card and some 5mm underfloor XPS as required. It's important you use a glue stick for this as you'll see later on. I've noted down which template goes on which material in the templates linked in the description if you fancy taking a crack at these yourself. Once the glue stick has had a little time to dry, the cutting out can begin. To cut everything out, I use a combination of new sharp blades, loud music and determination. I've got to be honest, there were many, many tedious, repetitive and boring tasks in this build, but without a doubt, the most exhausting part was the cutting out. I could have simplified the shapes and cut down on loads of extra cutting, but it was important to maintain the look I was going for and that meant putting in the work. Each time I had a section cut down, I followed the grey lines on the template with my knife. These scores would be used to index the next pieces to be added once the paper template is removed. If you don't remove the printer paper before you paint, the moisture in the paint puckers and deforms it, as well as reactivating the glue stick. I had this unfortunate incident on a previous build and it gave me the idea to remove the templates using water. Using a brush, I load up the paper with water until the glue stick is reactivated and the paper can be peeled off. You'll see the colour of the paper change and that gives you a good idea it's ready to come off. All the pieces glued to cereal box card were left with their paper on as I will glue these pieces paper side down later. The final bits to cut out were the railing barrier supports. These were traced onto 5mm XPS from the L-shaped template. Again another long but necessary step to add interest, shape and variation. The last step before gluing everything together was to add some detail to the watchtower and bridge tops. I did this by measuring lines, cutting guides with a sharp knife, then expanding those cuts with a pen. I think you'd easily be able to skip this step. It will save you a ton of time and not diminish the build by much, but up to you. Two top tips for you now. First, on the watchtowers, do not initially cut out the interior shapes on the outer supports. Instead, push these into combined bulkheads first. You'll create a divot in the card so that once you've cut away more of their structure, the supports are easier to push in without completely crumpling them. I mangled two supports until I realised my error. Second, on the walkways, mark the positions of the railing supports while you can see the marks on the template. The walkway tops are reversed before gluing, and once you've reversed them, you'll lose the marks. And now, my favourite part, the actual building you finally get to glue the massive jigsaw puzzle of cutout bits together. As an unplanned bonus, I noticed I had a load of bits that had been cut away that were interesting shapes. After a bit of experimenting, these got turned into some barricades for cover. Just goes to show that you need to keep your eyes open and never blindly throw things away. You might be tempted to skip the supports underneath these big D-shaped buildings, but they add a huge amount of structure and rigidity and make the piece feel really solid. Once all the glue had dried, I began adding rivets to everything. I'd added as much shape as I could with card, but had a lot of flat surfaces that really needed some attention. My only consideration was allowing things to be stacked or placed together, and this meant that some areas did have to stay a little bearer. This is where some clever painting would help. First, everything was base coated with white gesso. I know a lot of crafters like to start from black, but in my experience, all this does is make it take way more coats to get any sort of coverage, especially if you're using the cheapest of the cheap craft acrylic. Don't get me wrong, black has its uses, but if your intent is an even vaguely light eventual colour, do yourself a favour and stop using black. If you need an area black or any dark hue, it's far far easier to add this over the top of white than the other way around. I didn't think there'd be anything wrong with some variation but I wanted all my pieces to share a common colour to make them look more cohesive, as if they came from one giant industrial complex. I took a good long look at the various bits of old school Necromunda card terrain and decided to aim for a desaturated blue-green base, moving up to desaturated cream grey 
mixing in some light blue in the middle to capture the feel of the old terrain without copying it completely. To get my base hue, I made a concoction of rich dark blue, burnt umber, buff titanium and warm grey. It looked very grey and washed out when initially applied, but really came to life once it was worked over. I had to mix this base colour up several times and always made sure to leave enough of the original mix visible on the palette for comparisons as I mixed the next time. I wasn't worried about perfection, close was good enough. Once my base layer was dry, I mixed up successively lighter hues, moving from light grey-blue to cream. These were thinned quite heavily and sponged on, being careful not to go into any recesses and prioritising the upper parts as the paint mix got lighter. The real trick here is not going too overboard with any one layer, letting the random splodges of paint build up thinly to create natural looking layers. And this is almost the last bit of video I have for the entire painting stage. I'll be honest, the project almost broke me. It took so long and had so many tedious parts. I almost lost all will to work on it. The only thing that got me through was abandoning all hope of recording it, at least for a little while. I had to start a few other projects just to give my mind some time off for a while. I spent this whole early stage with that nagging feeling that I'd made a mistake and there was no saving it. But I stuck with it. I held on to the idea that my plan was good, and it would work, it just wasn't working yet. So for inspiration, I went back to the original Necromunda terrain to see what mine needed. My first breakthrough was adding some hazard stripes. I know, right? Stupid, simple, but entirely necessary. Now, are they great painted hazard stripes? No, seriously not, but they gave the project and me a lift, and I started to be able to see it. Next, I needed small freehand details, randomly dotted text and warnings, all small, insignificant and low contrast, but they added yet more layers of interest and scale. And now, I was feeling a lot better. I had properly laid the foundation for the chipping, shading and weathering I had planned. I find adding the chipping a little daunting. Always that idea in the back of my mind that I'm about to obliterate hours and hours of work. I can also get a little too heavy handed with it. So, even if it seems like a simple, thoughtless process, always keep it restrained and sensible. I added my chipping using a sponge and some thinned, burnt umber. I really like the way this ultra, crap, cheap paint works. I think I use all its negatives as positives. It has really odd coverage when you thin it, and it's quite easy to reactivate a bit even once dry, meaning successive layers of wash and weathering bleed together with it and in some spots I got some really awesome accidental grubby griminess. Over the chipping I used a brush to add selective areas of metallic silver to give some extra texture and reflectivity. Next I added my weathering and shading. First came my homemade rust wash. Like the chipping I did my best not to overdo it, but I could have been a little more restrained with it as the larger areas I think really hurt the scale a bit. Second was a semi-targeted homemade shading wash. Where possible, I didn't just dump this everywhere. I see a lot of people just drowning their projects in wash, then spending ages bringing the finish back up. I genuinely think there is a case for targeted washes being much, much quicker. So with everything dry, I laid it all out to take a look. And just look at it. I started this project at the start of September 2022, and it's now, at time of recording, March 2023. So yeah, it was a long, hard ride, but man am I happy with how it all turned out. I generally say I enjoy all aspects of the hobby, from conception, design, building, even the painting, but on this build the sheer amount of cutting and painting was a real pain when done in bulk. And by the end, I was just desperate to get it all finished and that desperation led to a few corners being cut. My advice is to break it down more, so you get the satisfaction of completing bits before moving to the next. I'm sure I'll eventually get myself a circuit machine, or something similar, as the bulk of what I made is held up by lengthy and boring cutting, and automating it would allow me to create things that are currently limited by my time. I think the only question now is when I'll build some more. <laughs> Maybe a little break. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this epic build and paint. Hope I've inspired you to keep the faith and push on through and get that thing finished. It'll be all worth it in the end, probably. See you next time, YouTube. <laughs>